Hey guys, so today we're going to move on to chapter 2 from the Edexcel Pure Maths Year 1 textbook. And this chapter takes a look at quadratics. So again, it's pretty introductory, um, just kind of a follow-on from the, you know, the higher-end GCSE material. But we do introduce some new topics in this, mainly being the discriminant, okay? Now at the end of this chapter, we would normally cover quadratic modelling, but I'm going to save that for a separate video, okay? So it's quite a lengthy one. I don't want to throw it right in the end of it, I'd rather do that as a separate um, kind of topic. Okay, so let's take a look at this. The first question, nice introductory question here. So we're given a quadratic x squared plus 3x plus 6 and then we're asked to find it in this form. So it's important that you recognize that this form here is just completed square form. Okay, so two marks for this. Hopefully nothing too crazy. Let's take a quick. So x squared plus 3x plus 6 now when you're completing the square, remember it's important that the coefficient of the x squared here, this number in front, is a 1. Now clearly because we haven't written anything, that's just 1x squared. So that's fine, we can, com we can complete the square from here. So how do we do that? Well you half this middle term here, your b term. So that, what we do is we write that as a bracket like we've got here, so it's going to be x plus... Now because we're halving this, it'd be 3 over 2. 3 over 2. We square the bracket like they've demonstrated here. What we do now to get this b value is we square this a term here but we take it negative. So if you square this that would be 9 over 4 and then take the negative so that would be minus, minus 9 over 4. Okay. And then you plus on whatever we've got left. So we add 6 to this. Okay. All you've got to do here now is just simplify, okay? So this should hopefully be pretty uh, kind of like standard and straightforward um, from your GCSE. But if not, thankfully, it's quite a nice topic to learn completing the square. So all I've got to do is simplify this bit here. So minus 9 over 4 plus 6. So you can just put this in on your calculator. But if you're going to do it by hand, that would be the same as 24 over 4 minus 9 over 4. So that'll just give you plus 15 over 4, okay? So a really kind of like standard question there, um, you're not going to get one quite that easy on your exam um, unless they're being very generous, uh, it's more likely to be put in with some other context but just as a nice introduction question, um, that's our answer there, okay? So that's that question done um, and clearly A is 3 over 2 and B is 15 over 4, just to be clear there. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. Exercise 2D question 4. So here we're asked to complete the square and to show that the solutions to this, this quadratic equation, x squared plus 2bx plus c, are given by the formula x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus c. So let's write the quadratic down first. Plus 2bx plus c is equal to 0. Now the first step here, whenever you're going to solve an equation using completing the square, clearly we need to complete the square first, right? So let's just complete the square before we try and solve it. So again, check the coefficient of the x squared. If it's 1, you can start completing the square. So it is. That's just x squared. So it's going to be x. Your b term here, obviously it's 2b in this case. So 2b divided by 2 will just give me b. So that's going to be x plus b. We square this bracket here. And then we square this term and take the negative of it. So that would be minus b squared plus c. Okay, so at this point here, obviously this is equal to 0 as well. These are the same thing. We've just written it in a different form, okay? But it's from here now where we solve this equation, okay, this quadratic equation. And to do that, what I'm going to do is obviously at the very end I want something like x equals well, in fact, this is what, exactly what we want. Minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus c. Okay, that's what we want at the very end. So to get x equals on its own, I'm going to have to kind of get this bit here at the very end. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with this part here. This minus b squared plus c. So to do that, I'm just going to take it to the other side. That's going to be equal to b squared minus c. And this is looking promising, right? We've got a b squared minus c here. There's a b squared minus c under the square root. And think of that as a bit of a clue. If this is the square root of b squared minus c, my next step here now 
is to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of x plus b um, squared, that'll just be x plus b, like so. The square root of this side, and be very careful, make sure you take the positive and the negative square root here. It's going to be plus or minus square root b squared minus c. And notice we're nearly there now. The final step is just to subtract b off both sides. So if you minus b and you minus b off that side, what you get up, what you end up with is this final solution here, just as they've presented. So if you subtract b off both sides, you just get x equals, and then minus b on that side just gives you minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus c. So four marks for that. Again, I wouldn't say it's too tricky, you just gotta be very careful. Okay, so just make sure you complete the square and then just get in the correct. Okay, so that's that question done, nice and easy. So taking a look at this question here now, we're moving on to this idea of the discriminant. Okay, so the discriminant tells us whether we've got, for example, two real solutions. So for example, um, my quadratic cuts through at two unique points here. Um, you know, it might have a repeated solution or it might have no real solutions. For example, something like this, okay? So if you do further maths, you'll come along with this, you'll, or you'll come to this idea of what we call complex solutions, okay? But if you're just doing A-level maths, you don't have to worry about that. Just understand that that's what we'd call um, no real solutions. So that would be too real. This would be no real. Because it doesn't cut through the x-axis at any point, right? So this question here, it gives you a quadratic, and it tells you that this quadratic has two real solutions. And we've just got to find that value of k. So write the quadratic down is equal to zero now remember the formula for the discriminant is just b squared minus 4ac and there's three ways this discriminant goes it's either bigger than zero it's either equal to zero or it's less than zero now if there's two real solutions this is when we'd say that it's bigger than zero okay just like that so it's bigger than zero when it's got two real solutions. So all you've got to do now is apply this formula here using this quadratic. So remember, that's your a, your coefficient of the x squared. The b is your coefficient of the x, and then you see it's just k in this case. So b squared, 36, 6 squared, 36, minus 4. And what I'd always do is do this 4ac in a bracket, just so you don't get mixed up with your minus here. Because sometimes this, this might come out as minus, so minus or minus, it would end up positive. So minus bracket 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is k. And that's going to be equal to 0. Uh, sorry, that's going to be greater than 0. So ignore me. Greater than 0. So 36 minus 4 times 1 times k, so that's minus 4k, is greater than 0. So what I can do here is I could write this as 36 is bigger than 4k. But I kind of prefer, and I think this is true for a lot of students, I prefer to have my 4k on the left hand side. So to think about that, the, the inequality is going to actually change if you think about it, because if 36 is bigger than 4k, then 4k has to be smaller than 36, right? So the way I like to write that would be 4k is smaller than 36, okay? And if 4k is smaller than 36, we can divide both sides by 4. So I'll divide that side by 4, just get k. The inequality won't change because we're not dividing by a negative number. And then 36 divided by 4, k has to be smaller than 9. Okay? So that there is my final solution. So for any value of k less than 9, it satisfies here that there is two real solutions. Okay? So that's just that question then, that being our final answer. So let's have a look at another one. Similar again. We're given another quadratic, but this time we're told it has equal roots. So just like we were mentioning, we've got to choose whether it's um, greater than zero, equal to zero, or less than zero. Now, we've already noted that greater than zero is too real. If it's less than, this is what we'd say um, is no real solutions. So that just leaves us with our final one here, this equal. And this is when we've either got a repeated root or equal roots. It's the same idea. So equal roots. Okay, 
so we've got to implement that idea with this question. So my quadratic sx squared plus ax plus x plus s sorry has equal roots. So it's going to be equal to zero in this case. It's got equal roots. Um, oh sorry, the discriminant will be equal to zero. So just ignore that for now. So if I do the discriminant here, b squared minus four ac is equal to zero. Okay, so. I'm making a lot of mistakes today. Hopefully you guys don't make the same mistakes. So if it's equal to zero, I've just got to apply it to this quadratic now. So b squared, so a squared, that'd be 64, minus bracket, do it in a bracket again, four, times a, which is s, times c, which is also s, okay? And we know this is equal to zero. So, um, all we've got to do now is just solve this for s. So, lost my pen. Solving this now, I get 64 minus 4s squared being equal to 0. And all I've got to do is take this onto the other side, right? So um, what I should have here now is just hopefully a nice easy equation to solve. Solving from here, what we want is just s at the end, so I'm going to divide through by 4. That gives us s squared is equal to 16. Now notice the question just wants the positive constant s, okay? So we're going to basically omit the negative solution. So what you would actually get here is s being equal to the plus or minus of the square root of 16, which would give you plus or minus 4, but we only want the positive constant, so therefore s is equal to 4. Basically we're omitting the negative um, s value there. So two marks for that, and again just demonstrating the idea of the discriminant. So two real is greater than 0, um, if it's less than 0 there's no real solutions, and if it's equal to 0, um, it's either a repeated root, that's one way we can describe it, or it's equal roots. So that's that question done. Let's take a look at the next one. So a quite a standard uh, like exam question here. Um, this is from mixed exercise 2. So we're given a function here. Now it doesn't matter that it's, we're giving it as a function, we'll just kind of treat it the same. Um, now we're asked to write f of x in this form here. So it's 2 to the power of x minus a times 2 to the x minus b. So to do this, think about the function that we start with. So, 2 to the 2x minus 20 to the 2x plus 64. So x is just a real number, but don't let that bother you. Now what I've got to do here is think about rewriting this. Well, the first thing that pops out to me is this 2 to the 2x. I could write that as 2 to the x squared. Now I can't really do anything with anything else, so I'm just going to write that out as it is. So minus 20. So 2x plus 64. Now notice at this point, and this is very, very common. So if you see a question like this, the first thing you need to think about is, you know, what we sometimes call like a hidden quadratic or a disguised quadratic. So what I'm going to do just to make it easy for some people, it's, I'm going to say let y be equal to 2 to the x. You don't have to do this step, but it makes it easier for a lot of people. So wherever you've got a 2 to the x, replace it with y. So that's y squared minus 20y plus 64. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to factorise now at this point. You can factorise this line here, but it can be harder for some people to see what's going on. So if you just write in this disguise form here, um, or you know the the un you know disguise form, we get this quadratic. I'm factorising this here now. I'm going to get y minus 16 and y minus 4. Okay. But obviously, don't forget y is 2 to the x. So I'm going to write that in the the form that we want now. So that's 2 to the x minus 16, 2 to the x minus 4. And that's simply it, right? So that's part A done. 2 to the x minus 16, 2 to the x minus 4. So A would be 16, B would be 4, for example, or the other way around, depending on which way you write it. And then part B is a follow-up. And this is always a good clue. If it says hence, use the previous answer to help you, right? You don't have to. You can sometimes do it in a different way, but they do that for that reason. So B. So if we use part A now to find the two roots of f of x. So the two roots will be when this function f of x is equal to zero so when that's equal to zero so when that's equal to zero and then similar and that and that are equal to zero so all i've got to do now is just solve these 
these two brackets here. So 2 to the x minus 16 is equal to 0 and 2 to the x minus 4 is equal to 0. So we can get two solutions here, that would be 2 to the x equal to 16 which would give me x is 4, 2 to the 4 is 16 and then again do the same with this one, 2 to the x equal to 4 and that one hopefully is easy, that will just give us x equals 2. And that's it, so my two roots are x equals 2 and then x equals 4 there. Okay, so my two solutions here. Nice and easy. So let's move on to the final question here. Um, and I forgot to replace it, so I'm going to pause it. Okay, so here we go. We've finally got the right question. So again, next exercise two. This time question three. We've got two functions, f of x and g of x. And the first part just says that f of 3 is equal to g of 3. Can we find the value of k? So, if f of 3 is equal to g of 3, what we'll do is we'll put f of 3 or 3 into this function of f, so let's do that, so 3 squared plus 3 lots of 3 minus 5, okay, so if you're not confident with this kind of function notation, all we're saying here is that wherever there's an x for f of x, we're replacing it with 3, so wherever there's an x, it becomes a 3. Well, let's work this out, 3 squared is 9, plus 3 times 3, so that's 3 squared again, which is 9, minus 5. So 18 minus 5 will give us 13. So f of 3 is 13, which means that this is equal to g of 3, which is also 13. But let's work out g of 3, because we've got a k here. So 4 times 3, so g of 3, would give us 4 times 3, which is 12 plus k. But we know g of 3 is equal to 13. So if we equate this to 13, 12 plus k is equal to 13. So what do we add to 12? See, was 13. That's just clearly got to be 1, right? So k is equal to 1. So that was the first three marks. Quite a nice, easy three marks. And then part b, we have to find the values of x for which f of x is equal to g of x. So again, hopefully this shouldn't be anything too crazy. I'd just say this is kind of like a you know, a, a pretty standard GCSE question, actually. So if I equate f of x, so x squared plus 3x minus 5 with g of x, but remember, we know what k is. It's, four, it's 1, so it'd be 4x plus 1. And all we've got to do here is just solve this. So if we solve this now, I'm going to take 4x off this side. I'm going to get x squared. 3x minus 4x is minus x. And then minus 5 minus 1 will give me minus 6. And at this point here, this is equal to 0. And I'm going to look to factorise here. So it's going to time to give me minus 6 and add to give me minus 1. So I can have um, minus 3 and then x plus 2. That should work. x squared. Yeah, perfect. So therefore, my two values here are going to be at x equals minus 2 and x is equal to 3. Okay, and there we have it. So that's this video done. So that's pretty much quadratic, um, you know, the quadratic section done. I'm going to do quadratic modeling as a separate video, um, but other than that, that's this chapter.